I see you're on mute, which is very typical of a Zoom meeting. Ah, oh, such a cliche. Walk in on mute, start flabbing, flapping my mouth. Were you no, flapping your mouth? Yeah, I was flapping my mouth. What were you saying? I don't know. I don't think words were coming out. I was just flapping. So I didn't know if I was on mute or not. And well, that's how you test. Yeah. <laughs> if I hear shit, then something's really wrong. <laughs> Welcome to Snobcast. It's a little podcast of mine that I love um, uh, showing off. Canadian content, comics, music, um, and uh, I'm very happy that they um, threw this my way because I, I love the show, uh, Psy Cops. It's the first ever Adult Swim Canadian series. Uh, that's got to be a big fucking deal. <laughs> Huge. We, yeah, we're, uh, we're very grateful. Very grateful. You guys are out in BC? Yeah, we're both Vancouver based. Okay. And, uh, and and like just, I I I have so many questions, and I know we have a little <laughs> bit li- limited amount of time. Um, I really need to know about the animation. I love the animation in the show. How would you even describe it, Chris? Oh man, that's a it's a tough call. I mean, like we've heard a few things. Um, but I, how we like to kind of talk about it is it's it's a two D show made out of three three D assets. So right. like it kinda everybody moves like you would see in like Archer or something, but all of a sudden they could do a full three D uh three sixty kick or or in our case like janky blown up car explosion or like we can play in the three D space in ways that most two D shows can't and it's kind of a surprise. So we really like playing on that edge. Yeah, it's it's really fun in an action scene to switch from guys fighting just like really janky 2D to exactly what Chris says, someone doing a roundhouse to someone's face. Like, you're like, oh. And kind of the other aspect of it is the naturalistic look. So Chris mentions that it's 3D and we picked uh, character models that that get pretty close, that are really close to human proportions. And that was obviously we just wanted to find something unique. We've, there's a lot of amazing stuff in the kind of Pal Arts animation, you know, Rick and Morty and Gravity Balls kind of stuff. But, you know, if we're going to be the first Canadian adult comedy cartoon, I'll swim. we wanted it to pop. Yeah, so 100%. It. And and I like, like I was telling Bart uh, earlier is that I watched the first two episodes and I rewatched the second episode just before this. Uh, and I think it's hilarious because the Bloody Mary thing is is literally a thing that we don't do ever like we don't even try we don't even test it because we're like what if it actually does happen <laughs> and then you're it's then you're horrifying. dead like you're just yep. <laughs> you're right i've never tried it maybe after this call i'll go in the bathroom spin around three times or whatever maybe. you're supposed to do let us know how it goes just don't take us with you uh, yeah. <laughs> set up a camera or something yeah. so i i feel like this is also kind of a passion project for you guys i feel like it's been a long time coming when did you first have this idea um, for Psychops? We had that 2016. About- 2016. 2016. We put together a, a, a pitch package. Uh, we we found uh, some producers who really stoked on it at, at Skybound, um, and we went around with an animated demo. So and we kind of we did that on our own in our little office. Um, maybe took us like a month to get a five minute chunk done, mm-hmm. and we took that out to shop it. And yeah, 2016. So what was that? Seven years ago? Nine? A million years ago? It feels <laughs> it like, a feels like years forever. Ago. Yeah. But so I, I will say, I mean, like, even at that point, this was, it was the culmination of kind of what Bart and I have been doing, um, you know, in our, our kind of practice up until that point. It's, it's kind of like the, uh, um, the culmination of uh, our style kind of coming together finally uh, we've done stuff since obviously like in the interim and this sort of thing but um when we finally got the development deal for this um in 2020 we just kind of like we put everything of ourselves into it and it's right. it, and i feel like it really shows 100 percent. i i love i i was telling bart as well earlier that i love the 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 animation i love I love the voiceovers. Like I love the I, I love the like the voice acting you guys do because you guys both play uh, Felix and Kid. Um, Correct. And these characters are are they a little bit like you guys? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We uh, we kind of had a chat about the other day. We, they're us when we're drunk. If we weren't slurry or stumbling, they're kind of the 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 most bold <laughs> and dumbest versions of us for sure. Uh, uh, but. 
but and then yeah there's definitely an exaggeration of certain things like their selfishness and ego and stuff i think chris and i try to keep that in check in real life but <laughs> we try i mean we all try to do that i mean uh, then we, we get a compliment do and it's like well, well i'm the best you know <laughs> everything's out the door everything's out the door so yeah but honestly like i think what they represent is our creative selves um and and how like uh we we also say this about kid and felix and kind of like our our typical comedy characters is never do things the proper way or like the logical way just do the absolute funnest way possible right. and uh, even if it's the stupidest thing it's more it, fun that way it definitely looks like you guys are having a great time uh there's no <laughs> doubt about that how did the rest of the cast come on board are they uh, f- uh friends of yours uh, were they you know uh, thrown your way we uh we before this uh, chris is kind of chatting to this we had we've been making cartoons together for 20 years and, and lots of stuff on youtube and stuff and it was just mostly chris and i in an office with our friends non-union when we did get the show it's union so it did switch things up in the sense that our our main cast we actually had never met any of them before they were all auditioned and we were so lucky to get who we did we we got a bunch of raw talent and then some serious pro talent um that said once we had our main cast down we were able to sneak in most of our friends that we've ever made cartoons and worked with oh, so it was that. kind of it was kind of amazing to to be opened up to a new group of uh voice actors that we normally would and then to also bring our homies in so it so it really is a passion project like down mm-hmm. to many gritty it's a passion project and and oh yeah um did you did you guys uh, go to school for this like did you study animation or was this something you just picked up uh fucking <laughs> screwing funny. around or? funny question Chris? <laughs> well, it's, it's, I mean, we've been talking a lot about our origin story lately, right? Right, right. And so like Bart and I, we, we met in school and, and then we both kind of, we came out to Vancouver to uh, go to Emily Carr and we both applied to the uh, animation program and promptly got rejected. Okay. So, so we switched and, and we got accepted into the uh, film and video uh, program. Who's the idiot which, now? The school. I know, right? <laughs> Emily. I'm, I know you got, I'm looking at you. Um, but there's uh uh, there was some joy in that because we could force animation into that program, um, but it was also still freeform. So we could we weren't kind of chained to traditional animation, and we weren't kind of locked into any sort of education path. It was very freeform. So uh, that allowed us to, as soon as we graduated, we got a series on um, the Comedy Network. Okay. Uh, yes. Part of their Comedy Shorts program, and uh, and that was animated, and that was kind of like it was a little feather in our cap. And, you know, chatting about it now, it's interesting that if we made, we, we really, that was kind of the origin, like laughing up, like we'd known each other, we'd hung out a couple of times, saw that we had similar sensibilities, and then both got rejected, both like knew that in common, then saw each other in the film program, we're like, what the fuck? Uh, but it's interesting how much not making it into a proper animation training informed what we did. Like our first okay. series that really helped us, this one called Archaeologists on YouTube, we made it with Poser, which at the time was basically used to make 3D porn. <laughs> and it's not a 3D porn show. It's about stupid archaeologists. Um, but it was because we didn't really know how to animate super well. And we're like, oh, this program basically does it all for you. And honestly, it's the gestation of so much of our style. This this kind of finding ready-mades. For, we don't use Maya. We don't use the traditional ones. We use right. all these new fun softwares almost uh, i mean like like kid and felix refusing to do things the proper way (laughs) refusing to ever learn how to animate properly we just do it our own special way Uh, i love that and i I, um i was just uh, i just remembered in episode one you guys do that i'm italian and you guys do that uh, (laughs) when you're in the like why are you talking like this why are you talking like this Uh, i love that i thought it was hilarious i actually like rewinded it a few times like this is hilarious um What's been the What's been the the feedback? I'm sure it's great. I mean, I love it. I'm also. I feel like we're probably the same age, more or less. Uh, I, I I feel like we need like. There's something about the generation that loves like that type of series, kind of like like you mentioned Archer earlier. Um, these like obscure characters that are so fucking weird and just like out of the box. Um, what's been What's been the feedback uh, on your end? It's, it's been, been amazing so far super positive uh i i'll say like kind of like we're just waiting for more and more people to see it and Love we're that, yeah. we're kind of like you know it's being like the chewing on your fingernails waiting for like kind of more reviews to roll in and stuff but yeah. everything we're hearing is really good and we had like a uh kind of like a secret pirate screening um on the weekend 
and we we packed this little bar with like 150 people oh. and it just killed we had so much fun um and so many drinks yeah. <laughs> we just had a blast but uh it was it was fantastic and and seeing people that are, are not normally into our stuff because we used to kind of you know like fight the mainstream as mm. hard as we possibly could and this is i'm not saying like psychops is kind of like uh super broad at all it's kind of it's definitely its own thing but it's it's uh it's accessible to a lot of people yeah for sure and 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 i think that um um the the basis of the show is just to have a good time and just 100 percent have have your you know take an edible or something have a drink and just <laughs> indulge in yeah you gotta be careful show. with the edibles i mean yeah. you have too many you're gonna have to watch the episode like 20 times to catch yeah yeah that's fair one line <laughs> Um, I, I like to go into a bit of background, uh, on you guys. And I like to throw some rapid fire questions out there to make the interview a bit more interesting than not fucking boring. Awesome. Um, I'm curious to know, uh, what you guys grew up watching and what really inspired you to go, go into animation. Did, were there specific, uh, shows that you guys watched as growing up that you were like, oh, this is like the best thing ever. I want to do this. Uh, go ahead. I definitely we we have like two there's the kind of like teenage selves which yep. uh we talk a lot about like tom green as a guy a canadian who just really rebuilt the system you yep. know i mean if you can call it that just obliterated the system uh did things entirely differently ren and stimpy south park was a huge one for chris and i both where you've been watching these glossy well-made animations your whole life and uh suddenly you're watching a show that's puppets and stuff and and chris you kind of have an allegory what was the episode that really kind of tweaked you oh the one where mr garrison gets face uh gets uh, plastic surgery and to show that they just replaced the paper version of his face with a cutout of david hasselhoff from oh, a magazine yes, yes and i just saw that and i was like you can do that that's amazing that was, it was just mind-blowing it just died laughing it, it really tickled me it's, it's really funny too like uh because we you know you you kind of ponder this question quite a bit uh when you talk to people about this stuff and things bubble up you're like mm -hmm. oh man i remember this because um spike and mike's was another huge sort of inspiration like uh there was one in particular where it was a guy who had a hangnail and he's kind of picking at it, picking at it, picking at it. And then he just like takes a bite and he pulls it and it just rips the flesh all the way up his arm. And it was just like, <laughs> there's, a, there's a, a level of gore you can do in um, animation that is still funny. No matter how bloody or violent or over the top it is, you can laugh at it. Um, and we, we experiment, obviously, you saw Bloody Mary. This, that one's a very bloody episode. Yeah. Or even the cut up hands at the end. Like we really like to kind of, it's a bit of shock, but it's also stupid. That's that. I mean, I love cartoons for that so much. Yeah, because you can do anything essentially, and and, mm -hmm. and get and kind of get away with it. Mm -hmm. hundred <laughs> percent. That's another one that bubbles up to my mind. Do you guys remember Tom, Tom and Margaret? Todd and Margaret? Yes. I think it was like yes. I was like ten years old. My grandma rented me like a, a shorts animated shorts compilation VHS. So I was watching it on my own, and the whole crux of it is like he's he's stressed out about his 40th birthday party or something and then he trips and falls down the stairs or something I mean, i'm reinventing part of it but basically he exposes his penis to the whole party all of his friends at the end of it and it's like you can have a penis in cartoons this is extra crazy <laughs> it's wild and it's good old, i think that was like a british was it british or like canadian content i'm not sure uh, i think it was nfb so yeah i think it was okay, early yeah, canadian, so canadian stuff uh and it's sh shocking because it's canadian you find you know canada's all nice and you know nice but we're yeah not. no I, we're not we're not we have this serious underground that yeah that the more you think about it the more you'll remember yeah um what about uh film wise we're uh, here at snob media we're avid film lovers um what are some of your favorite films you know jurassic park <laughs> oh, i was actually just talking about jurassic park the other day because it's been 30 years since it came out no way no but way is it wild to you guys how scary that movie still is it's nuts it's nuts i mean like that's that's master class it's the jaws technique right you have robots yeah. that don't look good if you look at them too long so just show them for like 10 seconds yeah, yeah. they're they, terrifying and aren't they actually bringing a mammoth back isn't that a big thing Jurassic Park's <laughs> real it finally yeah, happened yeah, yeah uh and uh, you know, a big one for me, I think Chris and I've chatted about this before too, but I'm from a small town in the Okanagan and 
my like introduction to any art was big next to nothing like I just didn't know I never saw anything outside the mainstream I thought sculpting and 3D art was literally like you know hammering uh, something out of stone and then we got Evil Dead 2 and Evil oh. Dead 2 was like the first movie you watch that when you're like a young teen yeah and you're like they're doing things bad things bad on purpose like it was just so mind-boggling and like how funny and how crazy and experimental it was it was the first in my mind piece of art i ever saw and, and related to oh awesome i love i love i love how you how you said that um yeah like th there's just so many movies that i think about now that i'm older that i'll go back and watch and i'm like okay i i know why i love this <laughs> there's and then like there's some formational ones for me that i i'm afraid to go back and watch because i don't think they'll live up to kind of whatever sort of magic they inspired in my head when i was a kid like, like uh flesh gordon in particular mm -hmm. um i remember i was like i don't know I, I, we were having a party and it was like 17 years old and it came on late night on the bravo network and <laughs> it's like I mean, like from all that, all the sex jokes and whatever, but it was just like, it was a celebration of stupidity in its own way. Like when they get off the spaceship and uh, the doctor, Dr. Flexi Jerkoff, by the way, great name. He takes a breath of air. He's like, good, we can breathe here. I mean, like, <laughs> amazing. It's good times. I just wanted to say, Chris, something from Spike and Mike's that I, just quickly on that. I remember going and seeing one that was so simple and it like had the theater roaring is like some guy put a cat in the frying pan and tried to fry him and the cat had a sound effect like meow, but they didn't like do a but they just replayed that sound effect like, meow, 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 meow. like something you would use so much nowadays but that was my first time i kept saying like they just replayed the sound effect it's, it is interesting talking about these little nuggets that mean to, to your point when you're like uh like old films you re realize right. what inspired you and even this conversation it's like yeah that simple use of a sound effect in a non-traditional way like stuck with me from when i was like 14 to now isn't and, that and funny like that we'll, we'll like when we talk about the craft and what inspires us like it will be kind of like that we'll just kind of tickle our editing brains and like up until psychops basically we had a, a kind of uh internal sort of ma mantra which was we'll write it in post and it was okay. kind of like how it always came to because we would over 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 generate and then that way in the edit you have so much to play with and then you can just do unconventional things like that i mean you can delete everything and just repeat one clip ad nauseum so, so here's, a, here's an interesting question is is a lot of the dialogue imp, imp, uh, improvised in a form yes we okay. our early writing is all starting at the show archaeologist uh was is almost all improv but chris and i kind of built this technique where we improv it's kind of garbage if we have to cut 20 minutes down to get two minutes that are good and then you write the in between of that to make it all big so you're getting the best moments from the improv but you're telling a proper you're using it to tell a proper story and we did that so much for almost a decade that we could sort of do it while we write now like we sit on a google doc together we wrote every single script in psychos on the phone which is so weird but it started oh, wow. in COVID. yeah and we're just blabbing like we're improving, but we have a short form. So we're able to write it down as we go and then stop and go, how do we connect these two things and have a logical moment? So I guess it's jumping between spontaneous and logical in a form that's improv. So in, in to answer your question of form, yes, it kind of all is. Yeah. It is. So, it is. And also, some, yeah, so, no, go ahead. I was just going to say that we used to improv at every step. So it would be okay. improv in the writing, like kind of that. We'd improv, we'd, we'd do table reads and try to get the, the, the weirdest people over to just do like the strangest takes you can and improv just in performance wise. And then we would kind of double down when we get into the recording. Now we've kind of shuffled most of the experimentation to the, the writing part. But then in the, in the, the room, we, we always encourage ad libs and, and fucking round and like, uh, like, go overboard because we can always yeah. just delete it right like it's yeah. so there's no reason not to um you had mentioned that you got the deal in 2020 uh did the pandemic uh mm. help you write more mm. or did it screw with your with your head a little bit I think that's a good question actually I mean I I think it's Chris and I both have said many times we think it's the best writing it's the it's the best work we've done and maybe there's something to say for that like it was really focused like when you're just on a phone call with your buddy 
Like there's not a lot to distract you. It's just, you're, you're really, you're really in it. And we were home alone, both of us, like uh, Chris's wife works or was she at home with you then too? She was at home. Cause I, I had a kid during right. the whole thing too. So like I found out at the end of 2019 that I was going to be a dad and that I was going to be a showrunner, and the dad thing went a lot smoother and faster. Um, <laughs> like, wow. So, a lot that's what you know yeah yeah totally so i mean but in in the beginning of 2020 before the pandemic we had like a little kind of like early writers room we brought uh, some of our favorite funny people in and started batting ideas around and trying to flesh out episodes it was becoming like a different version of the show but like it was an amazing experience for like idea generation um and then the pandemic hit that kind of all went away and and then it was down to us to you know, I think our, our biggest concern was like, are we still going to be funny if we're not making each other shit our pants in the same room together? Right. right. And, and we kind of overcame that very quickly. Yeah. We were still laughing our asses off. Yeah. Yeah. We, we had this thing where it was like time till crying or I had time till crying. It was like, if, if it takes us 30 minutes or less to, for me to cry laughing while we're writing, then it's going to be a good script. And it, <laughs> it was universal. It worked great. So all the episodes that are upcoming, because it, it aired uh, on June 4th, so it's uh, Sunday nights, uh, 12.30 a.m., am I correct? That's, that's still the schedule and all that. Um, How many episodes did you write? How many are, are, are how many are left? Like, how many are coming up? We got two. Yeah. 22 coming up. Oh, shit. Nice. Yeah, yeah, so, like, yeah. it's, it's a full-fledged season. Like, it's not... There's, yeah. There's no, there's no cutting corners or anything. There's a uh, lot of content. There's a lot of supernatural entities to get through, you know? Oh, man, I love that. <laughs> I, I really I really think the show is special, and, and, and it's really funny. Um, and I think you guys should be really proud because, like, like we said at the top of the show, it's the first Canadian series on Adult Swim, and I think you guys are in this roster with all these fucking iconic shows that are on that network right uh, oh man that is so nice to hear thank you so much so i really hope that this thing keeps going and um i mean at this point you guys should just come to montreal for just for laughs and like do a cast panel and shit and i'm just i'm putting it oh, out that'd there be rad putting oh, it yeah. out that'd be very fun first uh, i know and, the cast would love it oh that'd be that'd especially be the, i feel like your show like is is it's not only funny, but I feel like you'll grow like this niche audience that's super large and they'll just follow you everywhere you go. I like you. I like your fortune telling. This is great. Let's, yeah, it's like, let's this let's is like the, the ball. This microphone is the ball. That's great. Let's manifest this. This is awesome. Uh, if ever you guys need an extra voice, I'm here. Uh, 100%. Yeah. Yes. But um, Bart and Chris, I, I, I wish you the best of luck. I love the show. Psychops is on Adult Swim uh, every Sunday at 1230 a.m. And be sure to check that out. Thank you guys so much for your time. Oh, I Thanks really so appreciate much for it. having us on. That was real fun.